Hey there, lovely listener. Welcome to the Confidence Connection Podcast, your cozy corner for faith-powered confidence chats that are down to earth as your favorite pair of jeans. I'm Ashley Henriot, your go-to conversation partner for this fun, faith-filled journey. Now, we're not here for the holier-than-thou vibes, but to keep it real and relatable. Life's already a bit too serious, right? So why not sprinkle in some humor and some practical faith wisdom? I'm so excited that you chose to listen to the Confidence Connection podcast. Before we get into today's episode, don't forget to leave a rating, a review, subscribe to the podcast on YouTube and anywhere you listen so you never miss an episode and you get to hang out with your girl every Tuesday. I want to personally invite you to our inner circle, a gathering of bold women ready to bring Jesus into their businesses their homes, and relationships. It's more than a community. It's a confidence revolution. Just swing by ashleyhenryout.com to grab your spot. I'm saving you a seat. Hey, you guys. Um, I'm so excited to have my new friends, Katie and Josh from Charleston, Charleston, South South Carolina. Carolina. Goodness gracious. I have so (laughs) many funny stories, but I will not let my ADD get in the way of what we're going to talk about today. (laughs) I'm so excited to have Katie and Josh Walters here. You guys, we're already had such a great conversation and I can only just be so confident and expectant of where the conversation is going to go for you guys. Josh and Katie have an amazing, powerful story. I've already just heard just a tiny bit. I've got to read in on a few things and I'm so excited. And it was like almost 10 years ago that Josh and Katie took the stage at Seacoast Church, Mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, in front of a massive crowd and they just poured their hearts out. And it was the beginning, the catalyst of what I would like to say of their mission to share about marriage in a raw and vulnerable and authentic place, which is what we're about here on the Confidence Connection. And so I'm so honored to have them. And I think it was since 2008, Josh and Katie have been on this epic journey of restoration. And I can't wait to hear about these divine miracles and testimonies that I've heard with all of that. But not only do they have masters in counseling, they're authors, and we're going to talk about their new book coming out in January, but they're so cool. They're so down to earth. And they're just a very fun, loving couple. I can already see their chemistry. I'm I'm already gravitating to it. It, And I was in a bad mood and they put me on a good mood and they don't even know that they did that. It's true. I'm a witness to it. But they're about just spreading hope and leaving people feeling stoked about what God has in store for marriage. I could keep bragging about you guys, but I'll let you continue to tell the community about who you are and exactly just what what the heart is of what you do and dive more into what got you started into this journey of sharing oh, marriage all well, the same. Ashley first of all thank you so much for having us it's an honor for us to be here with you and all of the work that you're doing to just help empower people and I love this idea of confidence we've already talked about that but I just want you to know we are so grateful for you for your voice for your impact it is hard to continue to put yourself out there and keep ministering yeah. and really grateful. So we're excited to share today for any of your listeners. Hopefully this will be an open, vulnerable conversation. We like to keep it real. And part of where our passion came from for marriages is that when we got married, we were 20 years old and we really thought we were going to take the world for Christ. We were like, if anybody's going to rock marriage, it's going to be us. We were just set to go and impact the kingdom. And about seven years into our marriage in 2008, we like to say that the enemy is just waiting, like prowling like a lion, like the word says. Mm -hmm. And so there were a lot of things that had happened. We had moved out to a church. Josh was a student pastor. We were pretty isolated. Um, And we were just running hard at that point. We had, mm -hmm. we knew I was a youth pastor and you don't go into ministry for the money. And so we were like, I'm handy and like home projects. So we would move into a house, fix it up, rent it out, move on to the next one. And so we were still getting our master's, managing rental properties, had both started full-time jobs, had three kids at that point, two and one on the way. And we just had it in all of our like hustle and excitement about life. We were burning at both ends in terms of a pace that was healthy and sustainable. And mentors would 
point that out, but it just felt like, man, we're in our twenties and I want to run hard all day and rest mm -hmm. in heaven. And we were, yeah. and we were like drifting and what I thought was adulting, just working hard and yeah. long days and doing life yeah. side by side. He, yeah. I thought it was normal and until it, it wasn't. Yeah. And I always like to say, I, I will be like, I have a high quit factor. I just don't think I was quite made or built for endurance hard things. Now I've had seven kids. So I'd like to say God's working. I, on, like, I do like to quit things pretty on and I love starting and not quite so much finishing, but you know. the, in our marriage during this, it, I really started coveting another relationship, another marriage. We, like I said, we're pretty isolated. We've got friends that moved into our church and they're about our age and we just latched onto them. And over time, over a year or two, our boundaries started to get blurred. We started drinking more than we knew was appropriate with them. They were hanging out late at night. And, but really I just started having this emotional affair where I started coveting their life, their marriage, thinking about him more than I should let all these things happen in my mind and heart and hit them from Josh. And so basic principles that we say now of marriage, of being honest with each other, of open communication, of really letting each other know who you really are, of prioritizing time together, date nights, those things. We, Josh thought we were doing fine, but it was really because I was hiding and I was in such a place of sin. And then, like I said, the enemy just waiting there like a lion. I was pregnant with our third son and really began having this full on affair when I, you know, said to the man and he said to me, like, they wanted to be together. And so about a month after that, a couple months after that really started that I confessed to Josh, hey, what if it's me? What if I'm the problem in their marriage? This much of a confession. We like to say sometimes you can confess 10% of the iceberg that's really under it. And I thought it would just stay private between us. No one will ever know. We could just continue on with life. And instead it became very public. Cause like I said, he was a pastor. He was the student pastor. Yeah. The family, the church, he was asked to leave the church. And we really went into six months of just no man's land. We had no clue where to turn. My heart was still given to this other man. I really was looking at Josh. I don't know if I want to stay in this marriage. I was so full of shame. At this point, we have three little kids. My son had been born. And so it was during that really devastating time that God started to just put these principles that we've been sharing with couples like into our soul, which we say before that, we're like, what were we ministering out of before this dark season of pain? <laughs> Never think that during that dark time, God's actually using it to build you, but he is using it to build you. And I just want to encourage anyone who's listening right now, yeah. who's thinking mm -hmm. like, how did we get here? And what good is this going to be for? Because I was not the girl that was like, and one day we'll share this story. No, I was like, am I going to have to wear a scarlet letter the rest of my life? I did not want to use this. But through this dark season, God really built in us this passion for all marriages, knowing that really, because the work he did in our marriage, the fact that today, now we have seven kids, four kids later, he's my favorite person in the world. You, we truly are best friends and lovers. And God restored all of that back is you know, the miracles that Jesus can do when you just decide to take him at his word and lean in. Yeah. So that's where our passion for marriage ministry came from. And then we've been an incredible mm -hmm. church um, here in Charleston that really let us come in broken and busted. We weren't on staff. Josh had left ministry just to get our family healthy, but we came in here vulnerable and we're really loved well here. And so even once he w was restored to ministry and was back on staff here for the last 16 years, we've just stayed in that posture wow. of, he, of being like, this is what is what you get. We're not hiding anymore. The people here really love us well. And on Sunday, if I'm struggling with something, a sin, a, a weakness, I'll confess it to our prayer team. I want to stay humble and stay learner. And I think that God has really used that to protect us be in here yeah humility is a superpower and vulnerability alongside that is unstoppable I think that we the world defines unstoppable even when we like to put Jesus in front of it that is okay. not biblical it's in our weaknesses that he is strong not that we are strong uh, but it's when we're weak that he is strong and he is glorified yeah. 16 years man there's so much to 
unwrap here. Um, real quick, you guys have more than three kids now. You told me you had seven. Seven. And they yeah. are, you said they're from 21 to two? Yep, 20 years 20 old to two. To two. Yeah. And yeah. we have three girls and then four <clears throat> boys are right in the middle. Two girls at the start. And then we have our one little girl who's the angel. We're basically grandparenting her <laughs> at this point. I had her at 40 and she gets whatever she wants. It's, <laughs> you say she's going to experiment in adoration because we'll see how she turns out. She has been situation. adored. Yeah. By I love that. Life. My husband and I would have had more, but my fourth one was our girl. We have three boys, one girl. Her name's Gracelyn. They range from 14 to four. And wow. she, the pregnancy was so hard. The labor was so hard. My body was like, I just yeah. knew I couldn't do any more, but we would have had more. But I was well, like, there's still adoption, this... fostering. Right. <laughs> what was the, yeah. it, we had five and 10 years. Yeah, five. And then it took 10 years. 10 to more have years to have two. the last two. <laughs> Yeah, I bet a... you have such an interest. There's so many questions I want to ask. I want to go back. And I know that we talked about endurance, but I would love for you to, Josh, I would love to hear your perspective on what she's talking about. Is that okay from a manly yeah. aspect of that time and what it did to you and where you were, like why you didn't have any, if that's okay, may I ask like suspicions yeah. and you thought everything was okay when she's like, it's not okay. I just want to hear your perspective and then going from how you guys truly got through that time. Yeah. So I would say that was probably the most difficult thing for me. I, I, I feel like I'm a pretty sharp guy when it comes to reading a room and like people smarts and just knowing. You're a pastor. What's, yeah. What's going on without it being said. And so the fact that I was so wrong about where we were was the hardest thing for me to process only because we were the couple that was going to crush it in marriage. And I would have said in that time, we were the couple that were crushing it in life. Not that it was mm -hmm. easy, but she was a school guidance counselor and had gotten an awesome opportunity and God was doing awesome things in ministry and the kids were precious and we were still having sex and date night and any of the signs that if you were to ask people, are you sleeping together? Are you flirting? Yeah. Are you, mm -hmm. But also, are you fighting? Are you, and I thought it was just a mixed bag and that's what marriage is. It's the good and the bad. It's right. the successes and the failures. And so, yeah, it was really mm -hmm. hard for me to to have been so deceived. And I think that was the part of rebuilding that took so much time for her to earn trust back only because I was so fooled by it. So that was really hard for me, but I feel like by the grace of God, and, and I've been, ever since we've started talking, I don't know that I've heard anybody use the language before that marriage was our mission and when you said that, I've just been questioning in my head, is marriage our mission? Because I feel like I would say Jesus is our mission. Is our mission. And mm -hmm. that I'm so grateful for, I feel like our story is, there's no point of pride of, hey, look what we've done. Yeah. Like, look what we built <laughs> of like the grace for seven kids, the grace to forgive, the grace to rebuild. And, and I feel like when people say, how did you do it for folks that have been hurt and can't forgive or for folks that are in a tough place and, and don't have hope. I just, man, every point of our journey was Jesus meeting us in it right. and the dark of the night, him being the one that would meet me in my pain and the desperation moments where I felt like she was slipping away. He would be the one to step in and fight or give me a word to go to a place and find a note that, like all kind of weird stuff but I, I'm just so grateful that uh from where we were to where we are like we're really just hope peddlers in the sense of uh God wants you to have a rich full and satisfying life he yeah. came that you would have life and have it more abundantly and for couples that are in a hurting place I guess that's where a part of marriage is our mission that there's so much of fullness of life in Christ where 
this relationship is a mirror and that if I can really learn to die to myself, if I can learn to humble myself, if I can learn like the things that that Jesus asks of me, that marriage is really the gas pedal or the accelerator on yeah. helping bring things about in my yeah. life. That is where I'm passionate about marriage because it's almost like the greatest discipleship tool, but you did not enter into it for that purpose. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It was all passion and love and fun, flirty. Yeah. Yeah. So many emotionally driven thing. Everything that you knew about your spouse is what got you to the altar, but it was all the things that I never, ever would have imagined this. And I don't know that I would have signed up for it. Had I Hold on, girl. I know you're loving today's episode. Before we jump back in, let's get real about something any of us face. Do those nagging self-doubts imposter syndrome, the fear of rejection ever hold you back from being bold in your business, in your relationships, in the world, especially when you're aiming to align with your mission for Jesus. Well, here's the scoop. My Confidence Connection two-day virtual workshop is your compass to navigate those challenges. We're rolling up our sleeves to tackle imposter syndrome head on kick the fear of rejection to the curb, empower you boldly to align your business with your mission for Christ. And we're not stopping there. In this workshop, I'll equip you with practical strategies, silence those confidence killers. You'll walk away with actionable steps to conquer self-doubt, slay imposter syndrome, confidently shine your light for Jesus in your business and ultimately in your life. And the exciting part, you could snag a bundle of confidence boosting goodies, like my confidence code quiz, my ebook, five days to a more confident you, a coffee on me, or a few, and a sweet discount code for our inner circle and even more surprises. Don't wait another second. Visit ashleyhenriot.com workshop right now to secure your spot. Let's conquer those confidence killers and the challenges line your business with your mission and boldly shine your light for Jesus with practical strategies in hand. I'll even link it in the show notes for you. So don't forget to check that out after this episode. Had I known, but I look back now, you hear couples go through awful stuff and they're like, man, I wouldn't change it if I could. And you think that's stupid. What's wrong with you? <laughs> that sounds yeah. awful. I will change that. But I feel like I okay. never, I wouldn't have yeah. had it in me to become the man I am. Right. Or for us to become the couple. Like I, I couldn't have led us here on my own. It, it took, man, just shattering the narrative, the ideal, the pride I was holding to help mm -hmm. us build what we have. So, so good. Yeah. So that's a brain dump, but I would just say in that, season man it was super hard getting over being yeah. deceived i felt like that wouldn't happen to me but man jesus met yeah. us all. and that happened in 2008 wow so how many years was that ago about 16 years wow. ago yeah yeah and we would say like from that point of confession we probably had about a year or two of still hell where we were really trying to rebuild. Mean, I mean, it was not fast. Building <laughs> sucks, man. It really does. Well, and I think that's the interesting thing is he's ha oh, he has had this stubborn faith. This There's so much in him, core beliefs of like, who God is, that God's going to fight for us. And re he really helped me lean into that. That's everything. You know? Yeah, um, It's everything. Because it, once you can have this vision for, hey, yeah, of course, his expectations were not that this thing was going to be up and to the right. He was like... Mm -hmm when we got married, I knew it was going to come with hard times, trials. And that really impacted me because I don't think that was my vision. Honestly, I don't know if I'd just taken so much from culture, but it's wild because we've done 16 home renovations in our 22 wow. years of marriage, which is crazy. We're on number 16 right now. And that's a whole nother story for another podcast, I'm sure. <laughs> but we've done it to have financial security with seven kids and him being a pastor and he's very handy.
But the interesting thing is this home renovation, we had someone come in and give us plans for the renovation, like one of his good friends who's an architect. And it's been my favorite renovation because for the first time I could see it, he's always been able to see it. He's always been able to go in and have vision for, but I had never been able to see it until we were like putting a new couch in it. You know what I'm saying? I it was do. just that. horrible for me, like to watch and live in this mm. debris. And this time we've had plans. Girl, no, I thanks. Loved it. No, it's awful. Let me be going when it's ready. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Walking when it's done. But that, and that's been part of it. This time we're living in an apartment also while it's getting done. But I've loved seeing these plans. And that's what I feel like we have a passion for couples is that, and that's what our book really is. It's just like a guidebook. Hey, here are some real practical tools. It does share like our raw and dirty love story and emotions of it all. But it also is real practical of, hey, here's some plans because what we can see in other couples is we're like, oh, wait, no, no, yeah. no. You feel like you have no feelings for him anymore. You feel like this marriage is done and it is actually not. You're If you lean in, you are so close to breakthrough. You are so close to the marriage of your dreams. Yeah. We have so much hope for that just because of our story. And we've sat with so many couples that they just can't see it. They're sitting in the rubble, in the mess. Yeah. They feel a lack of connection and they just can't see, like, how could this ever be? Yeah. Like, Nobody's ever given it practically. Let's be real. My husband and I, we didn't go through a honeymoon phase. We went through hell phase, okay? We're coming into the honeymoon <laughs> phase. Because I was a single mom with lots of baggage with two kids. Yeah. And I was very independent and now I have to lean and be vulnerable again. What is that? Right. And then he also came with baggage. And so we're unloading together. Right. Yeah. And that's yeah. really hard to navigate when you want to hold on to your own suitcase. And, wow. and you have people who, you know, and I'm going to be transparent. Like we went through so many people in the regard of there was nothing tangible or practical yeah, that's great. We love Jesus too, but this is hell on wheels. That's awesome. Would you like to come live in my house? Can you tell me visually what that actually looks like? And I would love for you guys to touch on that because I just, I, I'm, I know that you guys probably, it was so many years ago, but that painful place is what brings the purpose of what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. It's that process of pain that brings clarity to our purpose. And just like you were talking about, Josh, about Jesus is our mission. I'm a coach and I teach people to find clarity in their calling. I don't know their calling. Only Christ knows their calling. I do believe that we all have a, the same purpose. Our purpose is to bring people to the kingdom of God, to glorify Jesus, to bring people the saving grace that we know through the power of our testimony. I do believe there are seasons where our callings change based on what we're going through or what is where something we're walking through because it's in that pain that God uses us the most. Yeah, it's in that yeah. weaknesses, weakness, but the devil will tell you, oh, you're too weak. You're going through too much crap. You're not going to be used. You need to get through it, which causes isolation, right? Yeah. And it doesn't want to make us vulnerable because we think we need to have it together. And then people don't know the practicality of that. And I feel, I try to, I get so excited about this that I will ask a million questions at one time, but I I'm working on that. Okay. So I'll <laughs> ask one question first. And the first question is when you talk about the practical in your book, can you just list some examples when you're sitting down with a couple, what is some advice you would give them if they don't see it? Because the building process sucks. Give me the interior decoration. Okay. Yes. Like God, can you build the foundation of my house and I'll come in, I'll move the couch. I'll put the throw pillows on the couch, but God's yes. like, no, no, no. <laughs> That's not how this works. <laughs> so would you talk about that? Yeah. So we, the book is framed around four parts and it's possibly the least sexy word when you're needing to rebuild <laughs> or want new life in your marriage. The acrostic is stay. Um, and it's, we'll talk briefly through each of them, but it's start with me, take quitting off the table, allow others to be a part of your story and yield. That's division. good. That's so good. Each step has a number of different sections and more practical points, but the overview start with me is really about, man, when you're, and it may not be an epic betrayal or like some kind of 
awful crossroads. It could just be that, man, we've been married 20 years and remember when we were fun and flirty and mm-hmm. went on adventures and now we don't, whatever the case. And so start with me is really all about when you're at a crossroads, the the natural thing is to point a finger at what you did to me, how you made me feel, your responsibility and how we got here and how I feel because of it. But it's the two of us individually. And it was no different for me having to look at man as much as I was blindside and this is her choice and responsibility. I had a role in mm-hmm. creating this culture in our home of shepherding her heart. Of Josh, so good here. So God, what do you want to do in me through this? And our journey to rebuilding was very different, but I think starting with me and really sitting in that with, wow. with me and God helped speak to me, help me, mm-hmm. you know, give me new. So good. If only so many people did that, the starting with me, like what you can't control anyone else. We yeah. can barely control ourselves, right? That's why we need Jesus. And so it, that's what kills the pride, right? That's what breaks the pride is when we like, okay, what can I do? I can't control the result, yeah. but I can put everything I am into what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, I think that's practical. I think what you just, the steps you just listed, I immediately was like, that is so good. If yeah. you want to sum it up. Yeah. It's so true. Each, each component has this, it gives you a framework so that you can start with me as a framework. And then there's all these tools that you can start to look at when you start with me. So for me, like one of the big things I used to do is blame shift. So any area that I was discontent in, dissatisfied in, struggling with, it would become his fault. Anything I wanted to put on him, I did. So it really helps you to say, okay, if I took him off the hook, if I do not let him be my Mm. scapegoat, if I don't blame shift, what could I do today? So you start there. And then everything that you're desiring in marriage, those expectations that is not your reality, if you can start to get honest with those things, we have this tool called confession therapy, which is basically just getting real vulnerable and real honest with each other, giving each other your 10 or we'll use language like, can you handle me? So if you can actually put these things on the table, then you can start to work and rebuild towards them. And it was saying as like, just to give some examples in our story, it was her bringing old love notes or journals where she had these pet names. She would call me to say, I just don't feel this way about I don't you anymore. feel like you're my boop. And you so, know, whatever. <laughs> what is that? Is that supposed to be yeah. there? Because say it out loud. And But it really helped me. And it was okay. Cause I didn't want, like you're saying, I couldn't control her. I so wanted there to be a switch I could flip inside of her to make her love me. But by her using real words of, I don't feel this way about you. When the day finally came where she did, then I knew she meant it because she had been so honest. He could say, I'm asking you to go to a new, a deeper place. I'm not trying to get back to Smokey Boo land. That might be gone, but what we're going to go to is a new place. And just to be clear, Smokey Boo was not a nickname. (laughs) Maybe it's a little bit more inappropriate. (laughs) Like we, my husband and I have a little bit of like, we're not going to say those things (laughs) in front of other people. So true. That was the craziest part of our story is that honestly, God really did restore those emotions. He still does oh, give love me that. Like he is that lover. I really thought we would stay together and be like pals, like chums. But I was like, that stuff is dead. So now we're just mm. going to be that old couple that's friends. Mm. But no, that is not true. Like God authors all emotions, mm-hmm. attraction, lust. Like God authors those things. And Preach, he girl. can restore them to each other and so it's not like you're giving up on that but you really are just going to a deeper place but so there's there that's just the start with me section tools around that and we've just gotten things so practical like we're doing this 30-day challenge right now on social media where we encourage couples to do very simple things but they're really hard so one is to pray together every day out loud they could say the Lord's prayer if they don't know how to pray together, but we would put our heads in each other's laps during the season and pray over each other. It is supernatural what God can do to it's start. Super, to... super weird. It's weird. So... I love that you're validating that. It's we look at that and we're like, yeah, these are easy things, but they're not. They're or so we would hard. do them, especially right. when you're People not don't feeling do it. 
Yeah, you're not feeling it. Or what if you're in the middle of a fight, but you're on a 30 day challenge? You're like, oh, you got to pray oh together. <laughs> Sometimes my husband and I like, in the past would be like, let's pray with each other. Our <laughs> so pray with like, my husband. Yes, like prayer, arrows. Like, like, got to pray that you would help her see. Help. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> that stuff works. People don't do it because it, it yeah. is challenging. But then, and then one thing is just a consistent date night, which this habit has truly revolutionized our marriage and we have a lot of yeah. tips about that and then one is having a getaway on the calendar even if it's for one night during the quarter but these practical things or we have this guide called 30 days to intimacy josh would say things like go have sex you're supposed to have sex and i'd be like they're not gonna have sex not <laughs> a chance so really you have to move couples to that place really practically so that's mm -hmm. the principles things like that so powerful I honestly, you're my favorite married couple to talk to oh about God. marriage <laughs> because I'm very honest. I'm very picky. Like I, I've honestly, you're my first married couple I had on my podcast because I'm very picky. I really do feel people out, especially in this theme because marriages are like on attack. You guys yes. know that statistically okay. marriages are like divorce rate is insane. I think it, what did they say? It was like 60% of marriages. And a lot of those are Christian based okay. marriages the church as it and is. of course it's the devil he's going to attack the head of the house <laughs> but he's going to put things out of order it, because it ruins legacies it ruins generations and so of course he's going to, and it's the covenant it is the one that the first thing that god created and it that's the only thing they called a covenant which is so important to god like, we have a covenant with god like, it is a very intimate relationship and anything intimate that deep the depths of the ocean are very scary and uncertain uh -huh. right and that's right. relationships that's we're going in the depths of like all the dirt and what is in that person what that is, is in the person i'm about to be with and yeah. i have to choose that yeah like that's yeah. right um it's and so there you know people don't talk about the practical we just yeah. say and he is jesus is the answer to all things but even jesus wept before he died on the cross and he knew he was going to resurrect he yeah. knew it. I always yeah. tell people, I'm like, when I'm on a plane, I just came back into town from a speaking event and I hate flying. I hate it. I'll do it, yeah. but I hate it. I just, and I hate that I hate it. Okay. <laughs> and my whole body and everything will be like, Ooh, and I'll have to turn on my worship music. Ooh, I just have to prepare to die. That's how I get through yeah. it. <laughs> I just tell myself when we're having rough air, I'm in a car. I'm in a car. <laughs> I'm in a car. And so so it's funny because no matter how positive I want to think about that experience, no matter how prepared I want to get for that, I'm still going to feel the fear. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And I think that we, the marriage aspect, nobody prepares you for oh. what you do after you feel the fear, the yeah. offense, the hurt. Well, and, and because every single cup, just like you were talking about with you and your husband and your story and the baggage you brought into marriage is every couple's path is so unique to them. Yeah. Even in both of our oh, parents been divorced before Katie has a high quit factor just on hard things. I have the stubborn faithfulness. And so it's just like, man, the two of us coming together and that's mm. just that's every single couple is. I is love so that you say that. That's another thing. Uniqueness. Oh, every man. couple is so new, unique and they're so tempting like you said, Katie, in the beginning, or our per own perceptions of what we think marriage should be, what it should look like, what we should do to make it successful. And we have to bring that always back that you're so unique. You guys went through unique things. And if we keep looking at other people, it's only going to kill our calling. It's only going to okay. kill that connection. Totally. And so yeah. it's... That's one thing I would say for the book, and I hadn't thought about it in this light, that the pr principles are prescriptive and that start with me totally looked unique for the two of us or so take quitting good. off the table for some couples that might look like their language. Maybe you get an argument and you say, maybe we should just get divorced or we'd be better without each other. And for you, maybe that take quitting off the table is changing your language, but yeah, the path and how you apply the principles is so unique mm. for every couple. Yeah. So, Gosh, it's a, you have such a powerful, powerful calling. You have such a powerful message. 
I just mm-hmm. am going to pray for protection. We have four more minutes. I know you guys have so many things, interviews, podcast interviews today. So I really want to honor your time. But one question that keeps coming to my mind, Katie, specifically for you, for women, that I believe the Lord wants me to ask you is, I, he wants me to talk to you or have you talk about validation mm-hmm. during that hard time. Because maybe did that come from you wanting, I want to be validated. I want to be validated. And then just afterwards, like, how do you, my heart hurts. It makes me emotional because here in the Holy Spirit, just tell me there's women with broken hearts and broken emotions. And they're like, my pain was so real. Do you want me to dismiss it and cover it up to make this work? Or because it seems so unnatural, what would you say about that, Katie? I believe that the Lord wants you to talk about that. That is such a God question because that was the pivotal moment for me in our story. So Mm. the darkest night of our story, Josh had found out something I didn't confess and we were at my parents and I was so full of shame and I really wanted to take my life. That's where shame tries to lead you. He The enemy doesn't just want your marriage destroyed. He wants you destroyed. Mm -hmm. He is after everything about us. And at that night I had gone downstairs really thinking like, I want to hurt myself. It's the dark of night. Josh is not sleeping with me. The only night in our whole marriage, he didn't sleep with me through this painful story because he was so upset. And I walk upstairs and I, I lay in the dark of the night and I see my Bible and I like grab it. And in that moment, I heard God say, Katie, I love you. I love you. I have plans for your life. I knew this was going to happen and I still love you. It's like in my oh. lowest moment, I heard God loved me. I was shocked. I could not believe it mm-hmm. that he loved me. And that is the truth. That is what I want women to hear is that Jesus is worth it. He is worth putting your hope, your faith, your trust in. Because what I chose that night, what I realized is that he loves me, the worst version of me. He created me and I can trust him with myself. And so for these women, you can trust God. You can trust God that he can rebuild these vows. You can trust God that he can take your expectations and your reality and he can meet that gap. Like it's an invitation to intimacy. You can trust God. You can trust God with your pain, with your unforgiveness, your hurt, your desires. And so I just think if they knew how kind, how merciful and how much he is willing to come right into our mess that is the point that starts to free us and change us and help us rebuild. And so it's such a God question. You asked me that because I, I really do think that was such a pivotal moment for me. Yeah, that was Jesus. Yeah. And I, what I envision, and then I want you guys to tell people where they can connect with you and get counseling and the book and all the things. I I believe that our emotions are just as important to Jesus. And I know that I, it's hard but it's comforting at the same time when you're talking about Jesus. What I envision is like when you look at your spouse, see Jesus, when you make the decision to love them, when you make the decision to forgive them, see Jesus, Mm -hmm. listen to Jesus. Don't listen to any other voice about, but lean so strongly in him that he's protecting you. He is protecting you. He's truly for you. He's not just telling you do it hard do it hard. That's not what he means by hard things. Okay. Okay. (laughs) This doesn't gaslight us. Okay. People. So true. Yeah. So I just feel okay. Dad, I know when I went through hard times, I'd be like, okay, dad, if he hurts me, you better get him. Okay. But I will (laughs) love him. You want me to love him, but I know you got me. Okay. (laughs) He does. You gave me this man. You gave me (laughs) about it. And it's just a testament of what God's done. I personally can't wait to read your book. If you want to send me a copy, I, of course. Um, I may do the little, I'm just kidding. I'm like, you know, the people that highlight and be like, just lay it on the table. Yeah. I like <laughs> you want your spouse to read and be like, so oh, true. I'm back it there. I'm like, that was Jesus. Oh my gosh. He knows. <laughs> Anyways, I could talk to you guys forever, but I know you have to go. Could you guys tell people about your new book coming out January, new person, same marriage. Oh, I'm so excited yes. about it. And where to find you guys, all the things. And I'll be praying for protection because main, I know the enemy is going to have a target on you guys because this is profound. Mm-hmm. I've 
I have talked to lots of marriage people. I've read lots of marriage books. I've never heard anything like this. So definitely all Jesus. So good. Just so you know, I say that not lightly. I do not say that lightly. Okay. Okay. That's so encouraging to us. And we're so grateful. So it's simply, it comes out January 9th, new marriage, same couple, and you can get it wherever books are sold, but you can find us at joshandkatiewalters.com. And you also can connect with us on Instagram. It's just Katie Walters, Josh Walters. And we're so yeah. grateful. Thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. And where are you guys? Can you pre-order the book any like before that? Pre-order. Yep. Yes, you can pre-order. Pre-orders start November 9th. And there is a lot of goodness that comes with pre-orders all the oh. way from November 9th until January 9th. So there's a video teaching series. There's study guides. There's the 30-day challenge we talked about. So pre-order would be incredible if you're up for that. You can do that on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. Wherever. Everybody's up for that. Especially yeah. these days <laughs> and challenges. <laughs> thank you for coming on the Confidence awesome. Connection. I want to have oh, you again. You. We could talk about all the things. God is so good about disciplining me. Like, ooh, just shut up, Ashley. So I hope to see you again. And I just am very honored to have you here in this community. Thank you again. Thank you, well, thank Ashley. You. You're the best. Okay. You're- <laughs> As we wrap up another Heart to Heart episode, the Confidence Connection Podcast. Remember, your connection with Christ isn't a lofty goal. It's your daily lifeline. If today's chat has you nodding in agreement, hallelujahs and amens along with it, or maybe even chuckling, show us some love, subscribe and leave a review. It's like a virtual high five. It helps us keep these conversations as down to earth and as relatable as your morning coffee. And speaking of practical strategies, conquering confidence killers, consider joining us at our Confidence Connection Workshop. We'll equip you with actionable steps to silence those confident crushing doubts, slay imposter syndrome, and confidently shine your light in your business. You're a part of our incredible community now, and I'm here to uplift you and connect with you. Till our next aha moment together, Stay real, stay faith-fueled, and always remember your confidence in Christ is the practical guide to a joyful and purpose-filled life.